Hello everybody, my name is Jos Manuel Guillén and I'm Yaltes Sales Manager. Uh, it's such a big pleasure to have here all of you uh, during this webinar. I know that uh, we have many people overseas, from Australia, Mexico, here we have right now 12 o'clock in the morning in Spain, and some of you um, are right now at night, so if you cannot see this webinar, no problem, we, have, uh, we are going to send you then a newsletter with the video of the webinar. Yep. Uh, before starting with the webinar, I would like to talk to you a little bit about Yaltes. For the ones you have never seen or never heard before about Yaltes, I would like to talk to you about this very, very nice multi-brand diagnostic tool called Yaltes. There is a big difference between this Jaltes V9 and the old one, which is the V8. The V8 was a little bit wider and it was made of metal. This one is lighter, uh, it's made of plastic, also a little bit faster, the new one. And the connectivity and software works the same in the old one than in the new one. So for the ones who already have the old one, no problem, still working and it will be keeping updating during the years, so no problem at all. Just to introduce you, the new one. Um, this webinar uh, is going to be related with commercial vehicles, but I know we have uh, some people here related with off-highway vehicles, agricultural vehicles, and even marine vessels, watercrafts, jet skis. So don't worry, because we are going to have some of the webinars uh, in the next weeks. Just pay attention to the social networks because we are going to uh, make some publicity of, for these uh, webinars and please subscribe. Oh, there we are. We have somebody else joining the webinar. That's great. Um, one other thing, during the webinar, you are going to have the chance to make some questions. You have a chat in the webinar at one side of the, of the screen. These questions are going to be solved after the webinar, in the next days. The thing is, some of the questions can be uh, from not, all, not only commercial vehicles, but also agricultural or construction machinery or marine vessels, watercrafts, jet skis. So maybe some of these questions are also going to be solved on the next webinars. Um, what I'm trying to say is, please pay attention to the next webinars, subscribe, even if you cannot assist, you will receive in your email the newsletter with the video. So some of the questions are maybe solved in these webinars. We have plenty of practical cases. We have plenty of uh, tutorial videos, vlogs, uh, future webinars, uh, full content of uh, JAL test um, knowledge and JAL test uh, practical cases in all kinds of vehicles. There comes Paul, I think he's from United Kingdom. Great, thanks for joining. Um, during this webinar, what we are going to do is some tips and tricks, okay? Uh, over the years, we face in our technical department, and technical assistance department and hotline department, we face some inquiries. Some of them are always the same. So I decided to do a very simple um, practical cases to see the most common communication problems. They are very annoying, actually, but uh, they're, most of the case is very easy to solve. I'm talking about when you're trying to connect and suddenly appears a 004 error on the screen. Seems to be a problem of JAL test, but as you will see, most of the, most of the cases is a problem of uh, the vehicle itself or the connector or whatever. So we are going to see how to do it how to solve all of these problems. And now we are going to try to connect in this Scania G440 with Yaltest. Let's select the vehicle, the brand, then the model, that's a G440, which is included in G series. And I need to check 
all the error codes in the engine system. So applying the filters, EMX, that's an EMS XPI, extra high pressure injector, common rail. As you can see, I'm connected by USB. So I select the system and then I will click and connect. Oh, as you can see, we have a 004 communication error. That's a common problem, and most of the cases it's not a problem of the diagnostic tool, in this case, JAL test. Most of the cases is a problem uh, in the connector or in the, in the vehicle itself or the power supply. So come with me and let's check what's going on there. Watch the door. Great. Here we have our Jaltes device. This is Jaltes V9. And here we have our, U, um, our OBD connector, right? As you can see, it was perfectly connected. But there is a problem. There is no light in the device. When this happens, it could be a problem in the connector itself or in some cases in the fuses box. I would like to check the fuses box and see if we have a blown fuse and uh, maybe this is the, the reason of, the, of this error. It's already connected in the laptop. Diagrams, fuses and relay. Here it is. Even if we cannot connect in the vehicle, we can use JALTES to see all the information of this vehicle. This will be very helpful to find which is the problem in the fuse box. Come with me. I prepare another device, our multimeter, to see what's going on here. So this is the fuses box. I already take out the screws. And in some cases, we have also here a description for all the fuses. If you don't find this description, it's in Jaltes. Also, I brought with me this Jaltes multimeter. A great solution and a great complement for our diagnosis device. Here it is. That's it. Light. There you go. Yep. I will start checking all of the fuses. Here is the problem. This fuse is blown. This one here. I will take it out. And as you can see, it's blown. So I will replace it by a new one. 10 amps. Usually the power supply for the diagnostic device in the OBD connector is 10 amps, usually, not more. See, you can hear how the device, now it's blinking over there. Watch the light, the blue light there in the device. That was a problem. It was a blown fuse. Let's try to connect again. Let's see if we can connect in this engine system. This is Kenya J440. First, before connecting, I would like to mention the possibility to check if the voltage of the power supply is correct. To do so, we need to select the communication mode, 
and then connection test. Here we have 24.94, which means that the power supply is correct. If uh, we did it uh, in the past with the fuse bone, the voltage will be equal to USB, and that means that it couldn't connect. So that means the battery power supply is correct. And now, let's try again and see if we can connect. There you go. Now, the job is done. Let's try to connect in this Scania G440 with this Jaltes V9. By the way, check out our new Jaltes trolley. It's a bit wider, combined with the previous one. It also has a very nice case here. You can keep your printer, you can keep uh, your devices, your connectors, whatever you need. It's such a perfect complement for the workshop. I really, I really like it. Um, so taking advantage of this trolley and this is Kenya G440, I'm going to connect in the engine. Yep. So let's select the truck. Let's, let's select again the model. That's a G440. And here it goes. There you go. Searching using the filter, that's engine, that's EMS XPI, extra high pressure injector. Let's take a look to the connector. Yeah, that's where it is. And the next step is clicking on connect. Let's see what happens. we got a communication error, that's a 004. Normally we have this type of errors because of power supply or mm, battery voltage is slow or maybe the fuse is blown, as you know. But in this case, I'm not really sure what will be the problem because I already took out the battery voltage and it was pretty good actually. So. Using the Jaltes main menu, we've got here in Jaltes link, the connection test. It is such a very useful function because it's telling you that the battery voltage is correct. If I disconnect the USB, uh, if I disconnect, excuse me, the OBD connector, it will be only USB power. So it means if we've got here the battery voltage, it means that the battery power supply is correct and the problem is not there. The next step is to check out the vehicle communication test. We can test here the CAN bus lines or 1708 lines. Normally, I always suggest to type 1000 milliseconds and then select CAN bus test. I know that because this vehicle has OBD um, connector and in this connector we find the battery, uh, battery power uh, lines and also the canvas lines. So let's go for it. And now we need to here click in the JAL test link one by one checking all the lines in the OBD connector. As we can see, there is no communication at all. That means that the problem must be in the CAN lines. So at this point, I will suggest to check out what's going on in the OBD connector. Let's go for it. Here we are. As I told you before, we've got here the permanent blue LED on which means that the battery power supply is correct. But sometimes, sometimes, as I told you, we've got a problem in the communication lines. As you can see, we've got here all the pins correct. There is no 
pins bend it. Let's take a look to the connector. Yeah, here it is. Please take a look. The pins for the can lines are oversized. 6 and 14 are completely oversized. This is a typical problem in some vehicles. Seems to be a problem of the jaw test device, but indeed it's a problem of the OBD connector. It has been oversized over the past of the years. So for such cases, I will recommend to use the multi-pins option. Multi-pins option will help us to connect directly in the oversized pins. To do so, we need to give power supply from batteries. How we do that? First, we need to come here and see in the connections how to use multi-pins. Everything is in Jaltest. So we need this cable and we are going to need JTP1 in pin 6 and in pin 14. How do I know which are the correct pins? Using the test, I know that this one is pin 6 and this one is pin 14. And I'm going to need external power supply. Let's look for that. Those are the batteries. This vehicle works at 24 volts. So first thing is to connect our jack to the batteries using these clamps. So it's a long cable, but sometimes in some vehicles like buses, we need long cables. Batteries are in the opposite side of the connector and we need very long cables. That's the main reason. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Next step, using the lighter. Small trick, if we do this, it keeps always connected. Now we've got here the multi-pins with the external power supply with jack. And in instructions, it was said to use blue and gray. Blue one is going to be plugged in pin number six and gray one is going to be plugged in pin number 14. Everyone has a small letter. So just following instructions, JTP one plus the letter And now, connecting the clamps in the battery. We've got power supply in our Jaltes link. Last step, my OBD socket connected. Mm -hmm. Permanent blue LED. We've got battery power supply. 
Let's try to connect. Now, it works. Great. I, I think it was a very, very good practical case. As you see, we have a 004 in both cases, but the reason of the problem is completely different from one to another. I would like to take the chance of this webinar and show you a high skill diagnosis function that can be performed with Yaltes. As you know, one of our targets is to have the same capabilities as an OEM dealer with an OEM diagnosis tool included in Yaltes. So we give the opportunity to the workshop to do the same. In this case, over there, we've got a Renault Premium DXI. And it has a problem in the electronic control unit for the A production management. The thing is that we need to replace the, this electronic control unit. And to do this and do it correctly, we need to copy and paste the parameters from one ECU to another. It's a bit difficult and not very intuitive at the very beginning, but I think that with this practical case we are going to do right now, it will be clarified very, very good. So let's see. Okay, so after replacing the electronic control unit on the vehicle, I've got here the old one. This one has the parameter file of the uh, necessary for this vehicle. The main problem is, once we replace the electronic control unit, if we don't change the file parameter from one to another, if we, if we, if we don't copy and paste this uh, file parameter, the vehicle may not crank. So we need Yaltes to copy the um, old file parameter to paste later uh, this file parameter in the new electronic control unit. We've got here a high skill diagnosis um, problem. The thing is we don't have the vehicle, we don't have an OBD connector, we don't have uh, the original connector for this vehicle, we only have the electronic control unit itself. And we only have the connector of the electronic control unit. So we need to figure out using Yaltest, how can we connect directly in this electronic control unit? Normally, we don't have this type of scenarios, but uh, you will see how with Yaltest can be done. Uh, also very nice to have this trolley we can have all the uh, devices, the multimeter, the electronic control unit, some cables and wires I have over there. And we have so much space to work in this trolley and it's pretty good. So let's go for it. The first thing is to go to the vehicle and the model where this electronic control unit was installed. So it was a Renault Premium DXi. And the name of the system, the name of the electronic control unit in Jaltes is called APM, which is the Air Production Management. Then, connecting my Jaltes just by USB, using the USB cable, and selecting diagrams, wiring diagram, I'm going to see here all the pinouts of this electronic control unit. It's not a very complex electronic control unit because we don't have so many pins. To see which one is for battery, which one is for communication, we need to double click here in the middle. And then the electronic control unit with the same picture as shown here is now on the screen, 
and scrolling down all the values pressures temperatures how it works depending on the model all the pneumatic ports and all the names pretty good actually I don't even need the service manual everything is here and here we've got the connector so there is a maximum of seven pins and now I need to figure out which one is for power supply here it says pin number one is ignition from uh, when you switch on the, uh, the ignition then pin number two is 17080H8 which is communication protocol 1708A then we have pin number three for positive then we have pin number four for ground then we have pin number five and pin number six for can high and can low and pin number seven for SAE J1708B so actually we've got here two different communication protocols that's CAN and the other one is SAE J1708 well this vehicle communicates uh, diagnosis using SAE J1708 and those ones are the ones we are going to use so we are going to have a maximum of five pins of these seven pins we are going to use five pins two positives one ground 1708 for uh, communication protocol and also 1708B for communication protocol inside this connector we have very very small numbers but if you cannot see them don't hesitate because everything is shown in the screen I've got here some cables I do it myself just for this uh, replacement so let me see because I'm going to connect right now the power supply so I'm going to use red for positive I'm going to use the yellow one for the other positive and I'm going to use the brown one for ground okay so pin number one which is the one in the center we've got here positive from ignition there it goes then we've got pin number three which is positive directly from batteries and I'm going to use yellow one for positive from batteries which is there it goes and now the brown one which is pin four and we've got I'm going to use gray and yellow for communication protocol SAE J1708 so pin number two which is this one it's going to be for SAE J1708 and now we've got pin number seven for SAB this one here so remember yellow and red both are positive and then we've got the brown one which is ground we're going to connect here ground and we're going to connect here positive see this noise that means that the electronic control unit has been um, power up with uh, enough, battery, enough battery voltage okay now the next step is going to connect our Yaltes device to do this we need to use multi pins so I'm going to quit a little bit from diagrams I'm going to select connectors and then go into multi pins and it says B and D which are yellow and green 
are both for the communication protocol SAE J1708. Yellow one goes for A, green one goes for B, which means that the yellow one should be connected in the green one. And the grey one goes with green one. Now we've got the communication protocols connected to the multipins. The next step is to connect our OBD cable to the multipins. And last but also very, very important, we need power supply with small jack. That's the one I, I've done for this case. It seems to be a little bit messy, we've got plenty of cables, but don't lose your mind since it's very easy when you practice two or three times. Positive and negative. Yeah. That's it. Now the blue lamp becomes permanent. It means the power is correct. And now after clicking in connect, we are already connected. So the next step after connecting is clicking in parameters and then copy to Yaltes. When we are copying to Yaltes, we are going to be request to use the expert mode. The final user is, uh, is informed that the, the function that he's going to do with Yaltes uh, requires an expert knowledge. Therefore, we have an expert code, and if the user has this expert code and types this expert code, it means that he knows how to use this function. In this case, the function is copy to Yaltes. So we are going to copy the file from this old electronic control unit into our laptop. Let's go for it. Yep. So the electronic control unit parameters will be copied into the diagnosis tool. It means in the laptop. I always suggest to have a backup of all of these parameters in our laptop. Okay, now the file has been copied. Now we can disconnect and connect in the vehicle into the new electronic control unit and paste all of these parameters. This uh, last step of connecting in the vehicle will be much more easier because we have the OBD connector. Let's go for it. Now we are going to connect in the vehicle uh, where we replace before the electronic control unit for the aim production management. This is the old one, the one which we already copy the file parameter in the laptop. And here we can see the unit which has been replaced the electronic control unit for a new one. For, for training purposes, I've got here another one just to see which will be the electronic control unit. It's very common that this, uh, this part, the electronic control unit, has to be replaced somewhere during the vehicle life. Okay, let's connect by OBD. In this case, quite a lot easier comparing with the other electronic control unit. And after connecting with Yaltes and paste the file parameter, we are going to check if the vehicle cranks correctly. Let's go for it.
Okay, let's try to crank the engine. So that's it, I, I think it was very very good uh, practical cases, very good webinar, I, I really need your feedback, I really need to know if, if uh, I did it well, if you need some other information, if you miss some specific point or there is something wrong and you consider that could be improved, whatever. Um, in the next webinars we'll improve. And in the next webinars, um, it will be done uh, great. But I, as far as I see in this webinar, we did it very, very good. And um, thank you very much for your assistance. Uh, as I told you at the beginning, you are going to receive a newsletter with a video. So if you need to take a look again to see how the things are done with Yaltes or you are in doubt or you for some reason you missed the the webinar take a look it's worth of time thank you very much and see you later